Celtics <laughs> Rick! So I guess uh, just discox them. Put the album on. Put the old bum on. Yeah, the bum is on. That's what cool people call albums. Bum. Bums. Slap the bum. Slap, slap the bum a bum on. on. Slap a bum on a record player. Bam, you want to slap a bum on? <laughs> Bang a bum on. That's my favourite bum over there. Look at all these bums I've got on my shelf. Have you have my latest bum? I'm going to go get some more bums. Going shopping, going record shopping, get some bums. Oh, you're right. Listen up. It's your boy, Max Pepsi, a.k.a. Bum Appreciator. <laughs> I listen to lots of bums. Yeah. Endorsed. This is Discox coming at you. Grave Miasma is the band. Abyss of Raffle Deities is the sound. Grave Miasma is three piece from London, and this is their second full length, only their second full length, surprisingly, released on the 14th of May 2001 by Dark Scent Records. Uh, yeah, they had a lot of EPs and stuff, but yeah, it seems to be their only their second full bum. Only two, only two bums. Only please. two bums. But the EPs are pretty cool. Yeah. Better than this album. Okay, let's go. Let's do it. So the first track is Guardians of Death. Play it. Wow, that sounded good. This is <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my reaction. Going the uh, the vocals on this are clearer than previous releases. I noticed first off uh, some sort of atmospheric riffing in there. Uh, lots of tremolo picking and lots of, I wrote cavernous leads because there's like lots of uh, mm. reverb and stuff on the leads. That's a great way of putting it. And the production general is a bit massive. Yeah. Shitbag, say something stupid. I like the diddly diddly doos. <laughs> <laughs> you know the boo doo 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 That. Yeah. Like that. God is a death. I think it's got a rad title. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And then um, his vocals are like, yeah, I I thought they're clearer than they normally are in the other releases. The same. And I mm. thought it was like he's got like some. Um, who's the mate from Bolt for her? Carl Willits. Carl Willits. It's like got some Carl Willits on his lows. Mm. Oh, interesting. Okay, I, I wouldn't have placed it myself. I don't know, but you're the bolt thrower fan club, so 
I just I just know half my shit, buff. <laughs> Only half. Only half. Uh, yeah, I think there's a good atmosphere on this song. Um, I point out as a highlight the lead at around the two minute mark. very disembodied and creepy and the way that you put it yourself max cavernous leads i think is perfect yeah i th- that's something that reappears obviously on the album and it's, it always sounds very cool yeah um i enjoy the way the solo is broken into two parts and there's a a riff that i believe gets touched on twice uh two and a half minutes and then five minutes Pretty cool one, pretty badass. One thing, though, is that I do think that some of the transitions seem a bit jarring and strange, but uh, that's that's Abrupt. really it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can I can sympathise. Mm-hmm. Endorsed by Max Pepsi. Got a sponsorship deal from Sick. Max Pepsi. I appreciate that. Should we do Rog Yapper? Or as I like to call it, Rogue Yapper, which is when a Yorkshire Terrier becomes a guerrilla fighter in Mao's army. So um How many times did that happen? How many rogue oh, episodes? At least five. There's five oh, known know cases. Of. Yeah. Damn. Supposedly there were more, but the claims aren't borne out by material evidence. Uh, so the paperwork doesn't doesn't prove it. Yeah, you can't. Uh, you can't trust. You can't trust documents from communist states, really. This is the one they released as a single, I think, before the... Yeah, it is, because there's a video of vultures eating stuff. Right, okay. I watched it. It's cool. So, yeah, it's about sky barrels, which is metal as fuck. Yes. Ah, cool. I didn't check that. I didn't check the lyrics. Um, I looked at the lyrics on other songs, but not on that one. Um, So, I guess that's... uh... It's a Zoroastrian thing, isn't it? Uh, they, have towers, they have towers of silence. That's what they call them, where they leave their dead bodies. Well, I think it's Mongolian, isn't it? It is a Tibetan thing as well. Tibet. They, they, that might be it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. there's some some sects of Buddhism, Buddhism believe in it. Uh, that would actually make more sense. Yeah, if you if in the video as well, it is vultures feeding on bodies like like that uh anyway it opens with dive bombs into the those leads 
again, which sounds fucking sick. I like, I've written down later on whammy bar abuse because I like mm. whammy bar abuse, but it is a recurrent theme throughout the whole album. The, yeah. Some of the lyrics are almost spoken word in their phrasing. Like they don't follow the beat as much. They're they're put into little chunks, and they're almost spoken word in the way they're phrased. But there's one bit where it says something like uh, "bear the shroud to the winds," and the phrasing and delivery reminded me of Johnny Headland from Unleashed. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, and then there's some sort of Eastern sounding instrument at about five minutes 30. Mm. And I'm not sure what yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 I made a note of that as well. Yeah. That's about that's about it. It's a pretty cool track. Shoot Bag City. Like the solo with a dive bomb into the solo as well. Pretty fucking sick, but I want to go back to the intro with yeah. the sugar digger 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 shul, 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 into the dive bomb. Bang. Oh, you want to go? You want to go way back? And then I also like the uh, build ups and with the rest over the top. So you hear like the big, like full um, hits on. I guess it's floor tom and some toms. Building up through the song, I like that too. That's about it, mate. Yeah, so I'll I'll concur. Sick intro. I think it's. I feel like it. It's at its strongest when there's a solo or lead, as the tones just sounds amazing. Yeah. Um, and the the Eastern folk instrument section that you've already mentioned is done is done well. It sounds very cool. Apart from that, uh, I have to say that it doesn't really hold my attention very much. It's it can fall into being a bit samey. Mm. Yeah. Agree or disagree? That's that's uh, my take on it. I'm not really sure of the the samey. Just kind of uh, it's not not anything that really stands out to me too much. Uh, Apart from the elements highlighted. Should we do Ancestral Waters? Yeah.
there's a lead towards the end, which is really cool. And there was something that annoyed me in there was there was this riff that come in and then it stopped as I was getting into it. I was like, oh, mm. Mm. don't do yeah. that. <laughs> That's a constant, constant criticism, man. Play it again. <laughs> yeah. What um, are you fucking playing that, man? Yeah. But two minutes, 10, there was a riff. Cool. Is it a riff or is it it's sort of a lead in it? I wouldn't say it's a riff. Yeah, we'll go with lead. But there's another yeah. lead at the end as well, which is quite nice. Yeah, now that I'm re- now that I'm going through it, I'm starting to notice that uh, uh, all my favourite bits are the, the guitars, the lead guitars. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, a hundred percent. Like, yeah, you mentioned that a minute ago, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. That's where that's where consistently this album sounds the best and where it's at its strongest. It just sounds, whereas when, without that element, and I, this is purely my opinion, I kind of, a lot of it just kind of blends into itself and isn't too interesting some of the time, apart from when the lead comes in over it and it, yeah. it sounds fucking cool. They've As nailed like that show, man. Some, like, yeah, yeah. It absolutely fucking screams when they do yeah, the man. high notes and stuff. It sounds fucking amazing. It's like a, yeah, like a fucking banshee fucking screaming yeah. through a cavern. It's amazing, yeah. It's cool. Shitbag. Are you dead? <laughs> Oh, sorry. I was uh, just just listening to the um, answers to waters. It's about ha- halfway through, and it's a, like a diddly bit. A diddly diddly. Three minutes twenty two, which like diddly, 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 with the drums as well, and then it goes into his his uh, a yar yar queen. Yeah, yeah. That's fucking powerful. I enjoyed that. That kept, that came at a good point in the song as well. Five minutes in is like it reminds it's reminding me of bloody Bolt for her again. I don't know if it's because I listened to this on Bolt for a Friday, so I listened to like six Bolt for albums. You've been you've been influenced. I've been influenced to hear Bolt for and everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, all in all, for quite a good track. Like I think it's a pretty strong one. Okay, so I feel like so far I feel like I'm coming in as the harsh critic on this one. Um, Oh, don't so worry. What, I don't want okay. there's two on here that I wouldn't listen to again. All right, all right, yeah, because I get harsher. But <laughs> <laughs> so, what I'll say about ancestral waters then, 
I really wanted to like this track because of the subject matter. Um, it could have made an interesting addition to my ancestor cult playlist. <laughs> <laughs> However, um, yeah, I, I have to be honest. I was just bored quite a lot of the time. Um, it's the same observation again that the solo and leads sound very fucking cool, but that's about it really. Um, also though, the outro is cool with a couple of cool riffs that come about and the drum. Um, mm. I don't have anything else to, to say on that, but the, yeah, the outro is very cool. Yeah. Where the riff fades out and then it's yeah. just, just drum. a drum. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking sick. Talking of drums, going into erudite decomposition, the intro with the the snare hits and the drums, that's that's pretty cool. Mm. This is where I noted the whammy bar abuse as well on this track. I've written down a riff at 26 seconds, but that turned out to be the main riff of the song, which is really right. good. Like, so the, the main riff for this track is, is good. The main riff of this track is good. it is a pretty cool riff yeah yeah, yeah there's there's something there's something about it it is pretty cool the the drum the drumming's pretty goddamn like I, i'm pretty impressed with drumming to be fair <laughs> Yeah, they're very good uh, musician musicianship. Yeah, but it doesn't always. Yeah, I mean, nobody can doubt the that element, but it doesn't always add up. At least, in my opinion. Are you um, saying it's no more than the sum of its parts? Yeah. Well, not even that, because. Um, doesn't that uh, doesn't that kind of imply that it is um, equivalent to its parts? Yeah. So I'd say that, um, in a sense, you can have multiple good musicians who just um, don't produce something that is equivalent to what you'd you'd assume of their caliber. Oh damn. <laughs> Are you saying that it's subpar? 
<laughs> Basically, he's clicking his fingers, being a bitch. <laughs> Shitbag, you got uh, anything else to say on that erudite decomposition? Erudite. Like, I've... this is a solid song again. Like, it's got all the build up elements that I like. It's got like bits that you don't expect in songs as well, like the um, like that that fucking. The whammy bar at, what, 320 sounds like a horse getting jerked off. It's fucking awesome. It's fucking lit, bruv. <laughs> Does, not <doesn't> it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny. All right. Yeah, okay. Cool. Well, yeah, the main riff is very cool. Drum uh, consistently is good. Um, But besides that, kind of, again, it's not holding my attention very much. It's... uh, I'll get a little bit bored. So that's all I have to say. (laughs) <laughs> okay under the megalith or under go Beckley Tepe <laughs> <laughs> So they have more Asiatic adjacent lyrical themes in this one, which is quite a common theme in Grave Miasma yeah. stuff, to be honest. I actually got as far as like it. It was a little bit hypnotic, this one. I, I got lost and I forgot to write stuff. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I wrote down more whammy bar abuse, at least. But yeah, so the, it says south of Tuva, which is the Asiatic centre of the Asiatic centre of Asia is what I was about to say. We were fucking <laughs> sentence. Geographic cool. centre of Asia. See? Ah, so f- from the steppes south of Tuva. Yeah. I like the steppes. For no no reason. What, steps as in? Um, With an extra E. An extra P. Oh, not steps as in the steps as in like band, a Pontic the step. pop band from the. No, <laughs> <laughs> not that one. <laughs> not that steps. The other steps. No, yeah, the other steps. The steppies. Yeah, the, the steppies. What Lee, <laughs> Lee, Lisa, Flair, Faye, and Claire. H. Huh? Lisa, Faye, and Claire. Yeah, that one. Yeah. That one. Yeah. H. That it? You've got them all. <laughs> I do remember that. Ian, Ian Watkins. Ian Watkins. Ian Watkins is H. Yeah. H, yeah. Why is he called H? Because he doesn't want to be called Ian Watkins. Yeah, but he was called far. H before. No, because he... He knew. He's a, he's a shaman and he saw the future. <laughs> <laughs> is his middle name like something... Wow, I think you fucking cracked it. The the two first lines from the steps south of Tuva, centre of shamanic cults. Steps the band was a shamanic project of H. <laughs> I thought you were reading it, man. We <laughs> 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 googled it and actually fucking got that up. It, like, it's, it, te- it documents all of H's ayahuasca trips, and he yeah. <laughs> But he's traversed the fucking realms beyond. He identified <laughs> years yes, in advance no, that he had to up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually, actually a self-improvement song. Like that's uh... <laughs> H has mapped the entire fucking DMT realm. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell, we've cracked the code, man. That's it. Abyss of Wrathful Deities was the key to this mystery. It seems. It all comes together. 
the deities are wrathful as well because H has all their knowledge that they wanted to keep from humanity, <laughs> but he's conveying it in pop H form. H is going to free humanity from our earthly shackles. <laughs> Eagles fly through the steps. Voices from the depths. Yeah, the lyrics on this are very cool. Yeah, they, they do have some cool lyrics on this. On this boy. Yeah, cool, man. I like it. Where, uh, which track were we on? So we're on Under the Megalith. We talked about the lyrics, that's about it, are we? Oh, I don't really like it. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just slow. <laughs> um, all I'll say of about Under the Megalith is that the build-up from the intro is pretty cool, uh, in large part due to the drums. Uh, there's the foreboding riffing that seems to be building into something cool. And then they just do kind of sudden transition back into sort of boring sounding, in my opinion. And it's gone at that point. So I'm I'm leaning towards what you're saying, shitbag. Um, I'm not overly impressed by by it. The lyrics are cool, though. Yeah, I just I just think it's just like it's a wrong placed song because like the first half is all hyping me up, and then it's like slowed right down. So, oh, come on. I thought it was going to be hard heavy all, all the way through. Yeah, I can see what you're saying. to the next boy yeah I guess so so demons in the sand sorry <laughs> demons of the sand got ro- the riffs i've said felt like rolling like they're going rolling forwards and they're pushed forward by the drums
I don't know what the lyrics are because the it's in Hebrew alphabet. So I was like, what? what I can't. I can't read that. I can't read those squares. I thought it was because I wasn't looking at the player when I was listening to it, and at about four minutes forty, I thought it was fading out, and then it didn't fade out, and it made me jump. <laughs> I think this song's cool. Um, yeah. It sound, sounds very cool. The intro is fantastic. The sense of foreboding and dread is is well done on this. It seems like an actual consistent piece of work for the most part. Yeah. Like it. Sector mid. Again, I thought it was just really fucking slow. Like it's just it's just doomy. Like you know, like I wasn't expecting doom. Yeah, I guess I guess that uh, could explain why I like it. Um, if it's a bit, you were saying it seems a bit doomy, but just. Um, I just found it a bit more, a bit more interesting than most of the stuff that's come so far. But anyway, yeah, just blast into <laughs> interlude, interlude. <laughs> <laughs> Palette cleanser. Yeah, I like it. It's a nice little acoustic thing, isn't it? Sounds nice with headphones. It's uh, atmospheric, you know, it, it's uh, acoustic. And then after it, exhumation rights sounds fucking massive when it comes in. I like it. I like this song. It's ironic because it's got a slow bit in the middle, but I've actually enjoyed the slow bit in the middle. Okay, fair enough. Because it's got like bit... some more sugar duggers. There was a bit I thought you'd like, shitbag. Like three minutes and five seconds, I think. It's the ting, 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 ting. Well, with the double kicks and the... Uh... Yeah, and the ride. And the ride, yeah. It's pretty banging. Mm. Yeah, I love, it's a good song. Like it's, it's their longest song as well, isn't it? It is the longest track on the album. Seven minutes and sixteen seconds. Yeah, yeah, it's like um, 
I actually can't really say a lot bad about it. I, <laughs> I'm trying to think of some bad stuff because I'm always kind of nice in the uh, old reviews. So you're just trying to be nasty just because you're always nice? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's getting a fucking two, two, but <laughs> I try to pick out stuff. Okay, fair enough. Pick out like the negatives. horse sounds like he's having an orgasm. <laughs> That is a highlight. That's not that's not a negative. That's I'm a gonna be doing that. Album. I'm gonna be doing that on all my leads from now on. That's a positive, mate. That horse yeah. was wearing fucking aviators. It's a zero. That horse was having a good time. That horse was wearing aviators, bruv. Particularly I guess it's the contrast of coming after interlude. It does sound big. like a big boy. Yeah, there's interesting bits like the you know, the leads as as usual sound good. Similarly, again, it doesn't hold my interest too much, really. Um, just kind of sinks into the sinks into the uh, background of the album, in my opinion. But yeah, yeah. Is there anything else on that? Should we do the last track? I think we can move on. So, Kingdoms Beyond Kalash, Craft Kalash. <laughs> I uh, I just wrote the cool riffs there are some cool riffs in this it's almost like an old school death metal some of it flirting with uh swedish death metal riffing Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I thought I thought it was kind of uh, cool. Like it sounds like bells going off in the start. Did you say there's bells? What church bells? It sounds like bells going. Yeah. If it's church bells, then no, no. Like um, the guitar's tone, the, the guitar's ringing sounds like something ringing, like a bell. Uh, where would you? What would you give as a, as an example of that? As soon as a song starts, you can hear the example. Oh, right. from that but fair enough I guess well I do and that's my opinion (laughs) sorry your opinion's wrong no no it's valid if you get bells from it you get bells from it you know what can Um, I don't I don't know how to describe it but it's like a guitar tone at about 3 minutes 30 it's like bring bring like that There's more uh, sitar in there as well. Or oud or something. Sitar, maybe. I don't know. Oh, here's a church bells as well. Oh, there is. Is there? There's actual church bells ringing. <laughs> okay. But no, just b- before I was on about like uh, the intro sounds like bells ringing and now there's actual bells ringing. I'm not so a maniac. 
like you can hear them in the background. I swear, uh, four twenty, blaze it. Are you sure you're not having a stroke? That's guitar dissonance, isn't it? That you're talking about? Sounds like fucking bells, bruv. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, well, shit back to having a stroke. Um, <laughs> Bitch, I hope the fuck I am. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Right, should we do final scores? Yeah, uh, I, I don't have anything really useful to say about Kingdoms of Kalash. I was kind of bored. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so fuck's sake <laughs> uh, I'll do mine first if, you, if you're okay with me going first go ahead I'm going to say that I think this album is pretty good however it didn't leave a, like an impression on me no yeah 100% um, like there wasn't afterwards there wasn't anything I could easily recall and pick out and be like, yeah, that was fucking nothing really uh, stood out to me too much. But it it seems to me that it needs it's an album that needs exploring a bit and needs to take some time with it and get into it and sort of pick up the nuances because there is some good stuff in there when you listen to it. And I like Grave Mazra anyway, so um but as it stands at the minute I can only justify giving this three bold nuts. Which I find fair. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I could care of Warhound. Like, um, there's two songs which I would probably listen to again, which is Waggy Yappa. <laughs> Waggy Yappa. <laughs> <laughs> And I would probably listen to Just Guardians of Death again. So your takeaway is that there's only two songs that you're interested in hearing again? Well, like I would definitely... Like, if it's the same with um, a few other bands. Like, I've, if I don't listen to the album again, then I would look out for the uh, songs that I like again. And there's two that I like, and I would listen to... Probably on a regular if I heard it every now and then. But as our album goes, I'm just going to give it the middle of range marks. What, three okay. and a half? Three and a half, yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm just calculating the average because I know what my score is going to be. Seven. No, not, not seven. Um, all right. So I also do agree with what Warhound was saying about how it doesn't um, it, it may be like uh, it, what, what was the way that you phrased it like it's lacking something yeah it's not. Not, it didn't it doesn't like leave an impression so much no it doesn't um, a lot of it just kind of merges together for me there's it it's not very interesting the same um same things are kind of retread quite continuously. Uh, and as mentioned, yeah, the, like the leads sound amazing. Some of the riffs are great, but it's just a bit of like a uninteresting mess. I mean, mess is a harsh way of phrasing it because it's, it's not a mess. It's just a pile. That's a nice, nice <laughs> way. Of, it's a pile. It's yeah. just a pile. It's a pile. It's a collection of messes. Yeah, uh, it's a accumulation of debris. That's that's <laughs> that's probably worse than mess, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> what else is this accumulation of debris? A it's house that just fell down. Yeah, it's just an earthquake. It's like the shit you find on a beach at low tide. <laughs> yeah, it's driftwood. 
Yeah, okay, yeah, there we go. Abyss of Wrathful Deities is Driftwood. Oh, that's yeah, that's harsh. <laughs> yeah. So it's not um it's not as interesting as I would say that you might expect from Grove Miasma. Hmm. Yeah. So it for for my sort of excitement of hearing that this was out compared to listening to it is not um do you think that your hype going into it could have affected uh, th- that's true uh, i can't deny that maybe that's a thing maybe their expectations are too high mm. um as you say you know we'll have to i think revisit it and uh look at it with a more fine-toothed comb perhaps tempered approach yeah so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to have to give it five bold nonces oof oof yeah i'm giving it five five bold nonces What's the average? Three and a half, probably, isn't it? 3.83. So it's four bold monsters. Have you got a gavel? Um, let me work something up. One sec. Can we add the gavel noise in? I'm going to buy a gavel. I'm going to Amazon and get a gavel. <laughs> four bold monsters. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. Slam just some pot down. Bench. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing it sounded worse than it was. <laughs> it sounded meaty. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally an empty fucking plastic pot. 